This is five on your side at six, focused on you. It was once the crown jewel of St. Louis, taking up an entire city block for more than a century. Tonight, city leaders fear the Railway Exchange Building has fallen into the wrong hands. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. Our Christine Byers spent the afternoon talking to city officials about what's being done to hold the building owners accountable and save the structure. St. Louis Building Commissioner Frank Oswald remembers the glory days of the Railway Exchange Building on Olive Street. I did work in the building at one time uh, when I was in high school and college and uh, you know I knew the building very well and it's a beautiful beautiful building. It's also expensive. Oswald called the city's board up crew while we were there Wednesday. So we're going to need to resecure that side. Between the $40,000 that the city has spent trying to keep this building boarded up over the past few months and the $18,000 it costs to remove that pedestrian bridge, this building's owners owe the city about $60,000. The company that owns it is Florida-based Hudson Holdings LLC. We don't have anybody we can go arrest. We don't have anybody we can go after individually. Five on your side discovered police have been called here 23 times so far this year compared to just once two years ago. It's really alarming. Downtown older woman Kara Spencer fears for the homeless who are living there as well as the public. If this building were to, for example, catch on fire, it would be absolutely devastating for our downtown community. Spencer says the city should make historic tax credits apply to the structure. I'd like to see our city or a civic minded organization, um, you know, take control of the asset. Oswald says downtown stakeholders are trying to come up with a plan. We asked him if eminent domain could be part of it. I think everything's on the table. You know, they're very, people are very frustrated with this because like I said, it's such an important part of downtown. And an important part of Oswald's own history. Christine Byers, five on your side. Spencer and Oswald say the building's owner stopped paying for private security to guard the structure in July. Christine called and left multiple social media messages for the attorney representing the Florida LLC that owns the building. They did not return our messages today. Right now, GM workers in Wentzville are on the picket line for the sixth straight day. Negotiations between UAW and Big Three automakers resumed today after a one-day hiatus, but both sides remain pretty far apart. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki joins us live from Wentzville with the latest details. Holden. Well, and as talks resume today, GM actually announced that it would be laying off an additional 2,000 workers in Kansas and not giving them supplemental unemployment benefits due to a lack of work. Now, the union members that I spoke with today told me that just goes to show how big the divide is between the UAW and the big three automakers as they sit down at the bargaining table. For the sixth consecutive day. UAW members like James McCann are holding the line outside of the GM assembly plant in Wentzville. This is a last resort. As cars continue to pass the picket lines, Elizabeth McCray says it's a subtle reminder that things should have never got to this point between the UAW and the big three automakers. Negotiations started a couple of months ago and it should have been taken care of. The UAW has remained steadfast in its demands of a 40% pay increase, a 32 hour work week, and a fully funded pension for union employees. 2008 contract, uh, there was a lot of concessions made by the union to help the companies become profitable again. With the company saying that if you take these concessions now, We'll give them back to you when we're profitable again. Those incentives needs to come back. The big three have been more profitable in the last 10 years than they ever have been. GM President Mark Royce is firing back against those claims in a newly published op-ed calling the UAW's demands untenable after the automakers offered a 20% increase in pay, an unconditional 6.4% 401k contribution for all employees, and more jobs as they beef up production of electric vehicles. Opportunities are here for them to pay us the rightful pay, the rightful benefits, and it needs to be done. I'm hopeful that we get progress in, in the right direction. That's why members of Local 2250 have vowed to stand outside these gates until a deal is reached. Well, you have to get tough. So if they're not going to listen, then you just have to action speak louder than words. They need to understand what we're really willing to do. And we'll be out here for as long as it takes, you know. 
At this point, nearly 13,000 UAW members across the country are already on the picket lines, and the UAW is promising to have more strikes at plants across the country if serious progress towards a deal isn't made by noon on Friday. Reporting live in Wentzville, Holden Kerwicki, 5 on your side. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, and for the first time, a flag was created for the celebration. A local artist and a committee worked on it for months, officially unveiling it in August. Our Justina Cornell learns more about the story behind the banner. It's a celebration in Sular, crews prep for the festive Hispanic festival. Organizer Elisa Bender knew an event like this was always needed in her hometown. I grew up here, so I was like the only Hispanic at school for such a long time. And so at some point, you know, more Hispanics started moving in the area and there really wasn't any type of large Hispanic festival or event. That's when the festival came to life in the late 90s. And now it welcomes a new tradition. City of St. Louis was raising a flag for Black History Month. And I thought, oh, how great would it be if they would do the same thing for Hispanic Heritage Month? We looked around, there really wasn't a flag or there wasn't an official Hispanic Heritage flag. So we thought, well, how great would it be to get a local artist? Bender contacted local artist Jose Garza to be the designer. There's an organization called the uh, North American Vexillological Society. It recommended not to use any text on the flag. It recommended not using more than uh, three colors per flag. A committee brainstormed potential flag prospects. Three different flags were finalized. 75% of, of, of the votes got it. This was the winner. The geometric design has the American Corderia chain of mountains. It has to do with the mountains that connect North and South America. You know, it's a connection between all of us. And the colors are specifically chosen, picked to represent the community as a whole. The color brown to kind of talk about the range of uh, different uh, cultural identities. There was a dedication for the flag on September 15th, and now it flies outside of City Hall in downtown St. Louis, and other cities are flying it as well. I hope that people see it as a symbol of uh, unity and that it's a mean to kind of bring us together under one banner. Justina Cornell, five on your side. There will be a dedication for the flag at the festival this weekend. Thousands are expected to attend. The event kicks off this Friday at 10 a.m. A live look at City Park from our Skycam ahead of what could be the biggest night in the Young Stadium's history. St. Louis City SC has a chance to clinch a playoff spot in its inaugural season. Our Corey Miller is at City Park ahead of tonight's match. Corey. Thanks, Mike. And there are a number of ways City SC could clinch a postseason berth tonight, but one is by far the easiest win. With a win over second place LAFC, the team will clinch their first playoff berth in their first season. Now just making the playoffs in this inaugural season as an expansion team is going to be monumental in its own right. But then you remember City SC is still in first place in the entire Western Conference. Even if tonight isn't a clinch, Coach loves how his team is playing with just five games to go. Playing a successful game and, and playing as controlling as we have for the last couple of games, I would say. If it means that we play the next game in a successful manner and we get something at the end of the 90 minutes and it's rewarded with a, a, a playoff clinch, then that's so be it. But we'll let na nature, nature take its course. You know, uh, What's meant to be will be, whether it's this game or the next. Um, but yeah, we're playing for three points for sure. City SC lost to LAFC back in July, but that was out in California. Tonight is at City Park. It is going to be absolutely rocking as the team goes for a postseason clinch. For now, that's the story from City Park. We will have more coming up in sports. Reporting, I'm Corey Miller, 5 on your side sports. And if you're going to tonight's game, do not forget to try and bring a non-perishable food item. City SC is hosting a food drive with Schnucks and Operation Food Search. The nonprofit supplies free food to agencies in 40 Missouri and Illinois counties.